Hello from London and it's Gareth here, or should that be Dr Popkins? This is the second in my Dr Popkins Method series of videos. The first one I shot in Tenerife, I actually filmed that quite a few weeks ago and it ended with my unexpected splash as I fell into the swimming pool. I was actually just trying to position, that's where the camera was running, uh, myself ready to dive in dynamically off into the distance. I took a pretty nasty twist to the ankle actually and it took me several weeks before I was able to, to run on it again. Now, I was at a retreat in Tenerife with other language bloggers and vloggers, and they were challenging me to really to put some flesh on uh, how I've managed to get fluent in four foreign languages and to a sort of working conversational level in several others. Did it amount to a method which I could package to help you better than I have been doing so far on the blog and on the vlog? Now, I'm a bit uncomfortable about this as an exercise for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's true that I've got a doctorate, but I'm Dr Popkins of Russian history, not a, a doctor in language learning. That said, I've got a vast experience learning languages, but it's that very experience that makes me suspicious of the idea that there could be some sort of quick fix method to get fluent. Anyway, I thought I'd start today by beginning to tell the story of how I did manage to get fluent in my languages. And I'm going to start today with French, and with Welsh. It's very much my personal history, I'm not trying to pull out particular conclusions at this stage, but helpful, useful pointers may emerge. Now the first one was French and I started that age 11 at uh, secondary school and I studied it through to 16. We also did a bit of German, I did that for two years between age 12 and 14, but dropped that pretty quickly. Uh, because with both languages I just made really very very little progress. Looking back, I think the problems were the normal ones at school. The language was taught in an abstract way. I didn't see any need for it. It seemed an overwhelming task, really, actually, and all rather theoretical. I realise now I was looking at language more of a, as a subject rather than as a skill, as I've come to see it. And I had no connection with French culture at all, so uh, it's hardly surprising that I didn't, didn't really get anywhere. It was only in the sixth form, so that's age sort of 16 to 18, that I suddenly became attracted to the idea uh, uh, and the excitement almost of maybe I could speak French. And the immediate spur for that was that I actually now needed to pass uh, another exam uh, in the language to get into university. And then once I got a place to study history, at the end of the first term, there was going to be an exam where I had to study and answer questions on a French text. It was a top field's uh, history of the, the American Revolution. And um, so that was uh, a real reason to make progress with my French. And so I got a bit of extra help one-to-one -one with one of my former French teachers who very gamely offered to give me some extra tuition in the, in the lunch hours at school. And I managed to pass the translation exam, it was, to, um, to satisfy the language retirement requirements to go and study history. And then, once I got to university, and in the long summer holiday before I started at university, I really did quite a lot of work on my French. And I continued that throughout my first and second year at university as a hobby. By this time, I was really regretting that I hadn't chosen to do sort of a joint honours actually in French and history. But what I really did was I um, started listening a lot to French radio. This was before the internet, way before the internet. We're talking the mid 1980s here. And uh, I also bought a book of vocab and I took a very systematic approach. It was a, a book which had about 5,000 French words in it, organised by subject. And I used flashcards. I put the French on one side, the English on the other. And I went methodically. It took me uh, about nine or ten months to go through this and to learn these words um, by theme. I put them on little cards uh, with little envelopes containing each topic. And I realised now what I've been doing was uh, sort of testing myself and developing a sort of spaced repetition system, which is something I'd use and many use now to great effect, but I sort of stumbled on that, um, unwittingly really, for myself. Then at the end of the first summer, I think, at college, uh, we went again on a holiday to France and I was amazed to note that thanks to all the radio listening I've been doing to the station France Inter, which is still going actually, 
uh, and I listen to it a lot now on the on the internet radio or on the phone, uh, um, we I was able to use a lot more French and really act as sort of the language link for my parents and as we were over in France and we were staying the first time that had happened actually with a with a French family. So that really confirmed to me that a lot of listening and a lot of words could really make a difference even though I hadn't in the interim me getting any practice really in Oxford with the language. I was starting to experience success and progress really, a feeling of movement at last with my French and as I say by this stage I realised I wanted to start another language and I can remember thinking at the beginning of my second term at university the big exams were over the workload was much less during the second and third term of the first year and I thought I want to start another language which one shall I do and I went into Blackwell's bookshop the big bookshop in Oxford I was going along the language shelves and I ended up at the Welsh shelf. There weren't many materials for Welsh, but I ended up, despite myself, buying this book actually, which is uh, Living Welsh, Teach Yourself Living Welsh, the, the old edition, and uh, no longer in print. But that's where I started with Welsh. Even as I started, I can remember thinking, what's the point of this? Almost all Welsh people speak English, but I was attracted to the exotic written form of the language, I think. And something else, much more powerful actually, was in play. And that was my own identity and family history. Because my grandfather, who passed away before I was born, uh, was a Welsh speaker. On my dad's side, the family had come from Wales. Uh, my parents had given me Gareth a Welsh name, uh, the surname Popkins is also uh, a Welsh name and I was aware of this background of my father's family in Wales and we had gone to visit Wales when I was a kid and I'd met some distant relatives who were Welsh speaking. My dad had told me stories of his own father being a Welsh speaker. Uh, he didn't teach my dad the language but uh, my dad must have been aware of this background too. His dad had the accent and would use the language on the phone to his relatives down in down in Swansea and in the house when I was little there was a little wooden box as well which my dad had made at school. Uh, here it is now, he gave it to me with the Welsh flag on top. He'd made in a woodwork lesson and um, I always remember being fascinated by this box when I was a small child. So putting things together when I was ready to start a new language I suppose it was almost predestined that it was going to be Welsh. So I worked with this one textbook and I started to apply the same approach that I'd done with French. Concentrating on the one book, working through it methodically, you can see in here target completion date, you can probably see that, Easter 1987. I can't remember whether I kept, kept to that, but I certainly worked through it by the end of the first year and was able to go off uh, in the summer to do a Welsh course. And uh, I did that in Bangor in the university. It was the summer school for three weeks. It was quite difficult at that, uh, uh, in that era, as I say, pre-internet, to actually find out information. You had to write off, send stamped addressed envelopes and hope that information would come back, which it did, type uh, a duplicated type sheet uh, of information. I applied and I went and it was an interesting three weeks. It was the first time I'd actually heard the language because at that time you couldn't pick up uh, Welsh radio. It was only broadcast Radio Cymru on FM and I didn't have an FM radio. It was called VHF then. And I turned up in, uh, in Wales a couple of days before the course uh, and I wanted to tune in to the radio to hear the language. But the radio I had only had um, a medium wave and short wave on it. So a long wave, sorry. So I couldn't still pick up the radio. I'd taken the wrong radio. Anyway, got into the classes. It was a, a great three weeks. It was quite a direct teaching method they used. And I picked up, you know, um, more Welsh than I'd had before I... Uh, before I went there, obviously, uh, and um, mainly I think it was a great social experience and to go to Wales uh, to see the language and hear the language in Bangor, quite a Welsh-speaking area, for the first time, and I was fired up to take my Welsh further. 
although it was um, only a couple of years later that I did that. What happened was I put the language aside during the second and third year really to focus on my work at the history and managed as a result of that to get a very good uh, result in history at the end and to graduate and have the opportunity to go on to do research at a doctoral level in history. But before I did that I decided I was going to take a year out and I decided I was going to go to Wales to do that. So I was back again with Welsh. The aim was to learn the language properly this time and I took a long summer course in Welsh in Lampeter in summer of 1988. It was a six week course, I think maybe eight weeks. Uh, it was very intensive, it used a drilling method and the based on the all-pan immersion methods which had been experimented with and used in Israel to uh, revive the Hebrew language. It was an intensive experience, uh, lots of stories from that time, but I then went on to Aberystwyth to live for a year with a Welsh-speaking family and it was really the combination of the period of intense study by this time I was working systematically as well on vocab. I'd bought a theme, a themed book of vocab similar to the one I'd used for French. I was going through that, doing huge amounts of um, exposure to the television, to the radio, going to the chapel in Welsh, speaking Welsh with the family, so using the language a lot, starting to read it a lot. I got to a great level after that uh, year in the country. And uh, at the end of that year, actually, then I went back and I did a course in Grenoble for two or three weeks in French. So to take the French further. Uh, so, um, yeah, and there I was then uh, as a sort of with good working knowledge of French and as a fluent Welsh speaker. Now, later on, I ended up teaching Russian history, actually, through the medium of Welsh at the University of Wales in Aberystwyth. So I went back and this must have been, when would this be? Six or seven years later, after my year out, and eight years later actually that I started, it enabled me later on to get a job using uh, the Welsh language. And it was the dream job for me really, teaching about Russia and Russian history through the medium of Welsh. Uh, you never know where learning a language is going to take you and the doors it can open later on down the line. That's been that's been my experience. So that's how my language learning story started. A pretty familiar story of not being very good at languages at school, but then discovering a need for languages, starting to get excited by them and to understand how they work a bit better. Focusing very much on the core structures to start with, really going at vocabulary in a systematic way, and also listening an awful lot as well as getting the speaking practice. No magic there really, but a long-term project which I was coming back to in phases. It's a pretty similar story with the other languages I've got fluent in. And in the next video, I want to tell a story of how that's happened and is happening for me uh, with Russian and with German. See you next time.